Yeah, let's go. Hi there, um, this is Mike Militello from Greenway Solar. Today we're going to discuss a few topics. I'm going to go through and tell you what they are. But the main idea behind this video is to teach you guys or customers <laughs> or anybody really um, how to size a solar system. All right, that's I want to get that across to you, and we're going to do it by covering these few topics. I'm going to describe to you what a kilowatt hour is. Um, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about your utility bills, um, peak sun hours, sizing an AC system, sizing a DC system, and how each customer may have a different um, s system for what their needs are. Imagine you're running 10 100 watt light bulbs. 10 times 100 is how much? A thousand, right, okay. And for those of you who remember back in the day when we, we all had metric, the metric system introduced here, um, which we probably should have kept with anyway, um, a kilo, kilo is equivalent to a thousand of any unit. So a kilowatt is a thousand watts, all right? Now, that's not a kilowatt hour. A kilowatt hour is if you run 10 light bulbs for one hour, that is a kilowatt hour. Okay, now, the utility companies charge us for every kilowatt hour we use, all right? And it depends on what utility you have on how much they charge you. So typical, a typical Los Angeles DWP customer gets charged around 14 to 15 cents per kilowatt hour, all right? So let me just recap on that point a little bit. Let me grab my hair dryer down here, which I'm not going to plug in. This hair dryer draws a thousand watts of power, okay? So if I run this for one hour and I'm in the DWP territory, how much is it going to cost me? About 14 cents, right? Okay. So a typical house, now people always ask me how much is a typical house use, and it really depends on how much power you're using. Um, but, you know, it, Believe me, in the solar business, I come across customers that are using 100 kilowatt hours a day and a lot of customers who are using 10 kilowatt hours a day. So it really depends on how much power you're drawing. If you're running a welding machine out in your garage that's drawing a lot of juice or a lot of power, you're going to be drawing a lot more power every single day. So let's talk quickly about um, utility bills. In front of me, I've got two bills. I've got one from the L an LADWP customer, and I've got one from a Southern California Edison customer. So DWP has introduced a new bill format, um, which is kind of clean, kind of clear. And on the back, I've got a little highlighted arrow here. It says your average daily kilowatt hours. So they've worked it out for you. They work out your average daily consumption, and they put it on your bill. This customer has uses 11 kilowatt hours a day. All right? Um, here is a, it's just a black and white copy of a Southern California Edison bill and their bill, it, it shows you the, your daily average electricity usage and this customer is showing this year, last year and two years ago, it's showing last year and this year he used 39 kilowatt hours a day. All right, so now we know what their average daily consumption is. That's super important for sizing a solar system. We're almost there. Let me talk a bit briefly about peak sun hours because that's going to be important for us to work out the system size. So, for those of you who live in the Inland Empire, out in Riverside and things like that, you'll know it's pretty hot and you probably, you could probably guess that you get a little bit more sun on average um, than a person right on the beach. That is true. So, I'll cut to the chase on this. Um, in the coastal area, you get about five peak sun hours a day for, for production of power. Now, a solar system, you're going to be producing early in the morning and late in the afternoon, like in the summer. But on average, um, you get about five peak sun hours a day. And just to sort of back that up a little bit, there's a website called PV Watts, which is put out by the NREL um, organization. And um, I ran the uh, zip code in LA County and it shows you like, sure, in January, you're going to get about four and a half hours of peak sun a day. And in uh, July, you're getting about six and a half peak sun hours a day. So that, that, those peak sun hours, by the way, are roughly about 10 to 3 in the afternoon. Okay. So this is important because this is going to 
this has to do with our calculation. So since I, I'm based in Manhattan Beach, I primarily, you know, I'm, I'm using mainly the coastal peak sun hour um, number to work out my system sizes. Now, of course, this is a, a ballpark crude way of calculating their system size, but it's enough for the average customer to get an idea of what system size they would want. So let's take, for example, the customer who had, who uses 39 kilowatt hours per day. All right? So, we just said in one day, they receive about five peak sun hours. Five hours. Okay. So, let's, I'm gonna use a little bit of cancellation here. One day, one day. This is an hour, an hour. If I divide 39 by five, let me get my calculator out. I can probably do that in my head, but just to be exact, 39 divided by five is 7.8 kilowatt. And I'm gonna write AC, that's important. All right, so in order for this customer, the solar system to provide him 39, 39 kilowatt hours a day, he would have to have a 7.8 kilowatt AC system, right? Multiply that times that, you get 39. Now remember, the power we use in the house is alternating current, or AC, right? Right. Now that we're moving on here, so we've worked out that this customer would need a 7.8 kilowatt AC system to produce 39 kilowatt hours a day. Um, so let's talk about DC system sizing for a second. Solar photovoltaic cells produce DC power, okay? I'm not gonna go into the physics of that right now, but that's what they do. And the panels feed into an inverter, and that inverter converts the DC power to AC. Now, unfortunately, all the power that's produced in DC form, we do not get in AC form. There is some loss, okay? And it's about ballpark, it's about a 20% loss. So, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do 7.8 kilowatt, and we're just gonna divide by 0.8. That's gonna give us about 20% more. So if I do that, 7.8 divided by 0.8. So that gives us a 9.75 kilowatt DC system. So, in order to produce 39 kilowatt hours a day, we would actually need a 9.75 kilowatt DC system, which is more or less equivalent to a 7.8 kilowatt AC system, okay? Now, when you go buy a panel, a solar panel, which we sell, they all, they all state their DC power output. So we use a lot, for example, of Sharp 235 panels, which are 235 watts DC. Okay, so just for the heck of it, since I'm right here and doing this, why don't we say, we have a system this size. How many panels would we require? Because that's kind of what you might be thinking. 9750, 9,750 watts divided by 235, 41 panels. Okay, 41 235 watt panels would give us a 9.75 kilowatt DC system. All right, now let me just do, just so you guys really get this concept, let me do one more, all right? So let's look at the other customer who used an 11, she used 11 kilowatt hours per day, All right? One day divided by five hours, approximately, okay? It's gonna vary a little bit by zip code, but this is close enough for uh, rock and roll. All right, so 11 divided by five is 2.2 kilowatt AC system. We're now going to divide that by 0.8. Oops, 3.2 divided by 0.8. 2.75 kilowatt DC system. So she uses a lot less power in order to offset her power. In other words, get a bill with, with basically zero because she's producing all her power herself. She would need a 2.75 kilowatt DC system, substantially smaller. Alrighty, so we've covered 
kilowatt hours, utility bills, peak sun hours, AC system, and DC system sizing. Now I write each to his own here. Now, not every customer, we, we sell a lot of solar systems, wants to, you know, wants to offset all of their power. They might not have a big enough roof to put a 9.75 kilowatt system that we just discussed a minute ago on their roof. So they might be limited just by the, the area available on their roof. Okay. Another situation might be, hey, a, a person just doesn't have the budget for a 9.75 kilowatt system. They might have 20 grand uh, aside, and that's going to dictate the size of system that they have. Fine. Another option is something we also we often advocate is the best return on investment for a solar system, and in, a, in an Edison in Edison territory. Um, that's often the best way to, to, to achieve that is to size the system so that you reduce your power consumption down to the baseline power. I'm going to go into this a little bit more in another video, but basically you get about 300 kilowatt hours per month from Edison at a pretty affordable rate. So if you're using say 600 kilowatt hours a month, you might want a system that generates 300 kilowatt hours a month to bring you down to the baseline level and in that way you're getting the best return on investment because you're offsetting the expensive part of your bill, right? Quickly covered that. So the, the point is with this here, each to his own, it depends on what your budget is, what your, your, your motivations are, your goals, and we can, you know, we can help you with that. So I hope that helped you understand a little bit more about um, sizing a solar system, you know, you can do it yourself. If you call a solar contractor out, um, you should, you know, having watched this tutorial, have an idea of how to size your system and have an idea of what size system you think you want. And then if he comes off with, you know, the right answer or what you think, then, you know, that's good. If he's way off, uh, <laughs> you might want to think twice about working with him. So thanks again, Mike Militello from Greenway Solar, uh, Manhattan Beach. Bye.